Hi everyone, this is the first bag of my series where I'm gonna show off in depth up close of my custom lounge fly collection. I figured we'd start with this one because this is the first custom backpack I ever made. That's why I always try to teach people like anyone can make a custom backpack. This is my first one and I think it came out not too shabby. There are some mistakes so I will show it to you guys but this is like my forever bag I call it. I have a bunch that are my forever bag and then I have some where I haven't even used some of my custom bags where I'm like ah eh, I wouldn't be opposed to selling them eventually you know kind of letting them go and decluttering my collection but this one is a forever bag. I will have this until it disintegrates and fun fact this fabric I I cannot find anywhere anymore. I originally got this fabric off of Etsy. Someone just happened to be selling it. It happened to be in a cotton lycra base, which you know is my go-to because it has the four-way stretch, makes it super easy to work with. And whoever's been following my channel knows I then apply and cure Odico over it because then it makes the fabric waterproof, but you still have the stretch from the cotton lycra, which is key, especially for a first timer. And if you notice, this plaque isn't your standard lounge fly plaque. Hot Topic had a Corpse Bride backpack and I had ordered it off their website and they mailed it to me in a bag. And I don't know if you know this, but when you ship backpacks in a bag, there's a high probability something's gonna go wrong and it definitely did. It was smashed, it was disheveled, and it also had wonky stitching. So I had contacted customer service so I could exchange it, but the agent was like, we'll just discard that one, we'll send you a new one. So because of that, I was like, you know what? I was like, well, let me use the plaque. And then I think I posted the actual bag itself, San plaque onto Macari or one of those websites. And I sold it for dirt cheap, like $5. Just if someone wanted to use that backpack, cause it still had, I think Emily and Victor on the front. It was just now missing its thing. And it had a bunch of imperfections from the bad shipping. Someone bought it. Someone was happy because it was a $40 backpack that they got for $5. They're happy. I got the plaque. I'm happy. And I also from, I think it was from Hot Topic, got these pins too. So we have scraps over there. And then we have Emily and Victor over here. And it says a tragic tale of romance. Here is a close up of that pin and a close up of scraps. I typically don't add pins or I can't say that. I used to not add pins to my backpack, but if I'm deeming it a forever backpack, I will add a pin. There's one backpack that I do have a pin on, but we'll get to that. That's not a forever backpack. So let me show you some of the imperfections. The one that stands out to me the most is over here, which you guys might look at it and be like, that's so minuscule. That's his hand, by the way. But I cut this fabric too short to be able to tuck it in. And that's why I emphasize using stretch fabric is a must. You can even see a little bit over here too, because if you cut it too short and it doesn't have stretch, like 100% cotton, you can't pull it and make it work and manipulate it and tuck it. Where in this one, I was able to. So you guys might not notice that imperfection, but it stands out to me and I notice it. And like, there are some parts where I tucked it, but it didn't fully go in all the way. And that's because with it being my first bag, I'm just going with the motion. Now in my seasoned age of tucking, a lot of the times now when I do it, I'll actually go back, which I never videotape because that would be boring just seeing me double tuck. I will go back and anywhere that I might see a little bit of fabric still peeking through, I'll go back and tuck and make sure that it kind of goes to where it's supposed to be. And that's the same with like over here, those little bits, like they just, it drives me nuts seeing that little bit of folded fabric. So I always try to hide those. All right, let's look inside. I used to keep the stuffing in these bags. Some of them I've taken the stuffing out because I usually hide the matching wallet in those bags too, which you guys have seen my wallets multiple times. So that's just one side of it. You got Emily's scraps. Oh, I love the maggot. And then this is the other side. I think the colors on this are so vibrant, so pretty, 10 out of 10, but we're gonna look at the inside so we can see what the original bag was. Oh. So it was, I think they're called Chibi, the Chibi Princess Disney backpack. Um, it had them all over the different panels of the backpack. We do have a pocket, though it doesn't have a zipper. I got this from Box Lunch and it was always during Box Lunch money redemption period, so I always ended up paying half price. But as you can see, like I keep my backpacks in pristine new condition. So I never put food in my bags. I never put drinks in my bag, lipstick, anything that could cause a stain or anything does not enter these bags. This is a keychain that I made out of clay. So this at one point was a ball of clay 
and I shaped him into the maggot. I kind of carved him out and added some different shadowings. I don't know if it's picking up on camera or not. I added, I don't know if maggots have a skeleton, but I added that just because I thought it looked cool. Like it was his like neck bone with some blood. I decapitated him in the movie. Obviously he's not decapitated. He is a whole maggot. However, he would have been a super large keychain to have. So I just thought it'd be funny to have his hanging head. Like, Ugh. I mean, he's dead in the video anyway. So what's the difference? I think it turned out pretty cool and then I added a sheen over it to give it some luster to it and I'll just show you the side so this is the side pocket not all bags do I have to customize this little part over here some of them have a solid color and anytime it happens which you'll see in the next bag the corpse right bag has a solid color I'll leave it as is however this one continued the all over print on it so I obviously have to cover it but this is the top of the bag just so you can see the fun little characters all over it as we're going down yonder to the next pocket so pretty look at that rose that's amazing that kind of gives me like Coraline vibes of the tunnel and this is the bottom so again if any backpack has a solid color bottom I won't cover it however this one also has the continued print on it so that's why it's covered and the top of the bag every single panel i think about where i want the characters how i want everything laid out and that's the great thing of having a custom backpack you get to choose what characters you want to highlight where you want to put them who you want to exclude if there's any characters you don't want in your bag but i love this this bag 10 out of 10 i think it's so pretty i love that we have emily and victor a little spider the children over here this is a great movie if you've never seen it definitely go see it with that, I'm gonna show you my second Corpse Bride bag for this video. Ta-da! This one is a lot more customization because I made the fabric, I made the plaque. So this is another bag I am partial to. However, some things I do not like about it is when I printed the fabric, it came out a lot darker than what it had looked on the file. I wanted all these characters even bigger than what it was. If it was bigger, it wouldn't have been so dark. I'm gonna call it muddy too, blends in. I'll, I'll insert a little snippet of what the design file I made look like compared to this. So I do love this backpack because I made the fabric and I made the plaque. However, it's not what I envisioned. So I'm not in love with this backpack, but I appreciate the thought I put behind it. Just to kind of show you the design up close, maggot always look great. And I wanted Corpse Ride right up in the center. We have the dancing skeletons. If we turn it over here and look at the pocket, you have the old man, I call him the old wise man. You have the villain, the dad and mom, and see all this stuff, it's just so dark, it's so dark. There's the back of it, just so you can see all the characters, everything that went into this design. And it takes me a long time to create this design. I mean, I'm finding every single character online. I'm putting it together. I'm overlaying it. I'm seeing how it works. So this is hours to make this design, if you can believe it or not, and then get it printed on fabric. So that's, and even the background, even the background I found. So that's why it kind of kills me when you get it back and you're just like, oh no, why? Fun fact, I do not customize the inner pocket. The most I'll ever do is paint it black. So most of these backpacks that you see with the front pocket will have the original design still in it. And I don't remember what this bag was, so we're gonna find out together. All right, I got the stuffing out. So this original bag was, any guesses? A Hocus Pocus chippy backpack. Now I remember, and this was also from Box Lunch. I remember this bag. It's funny because like when I first got this backpack, this bag was so overproduced. That you don't even think about it. And now the time has passed. You're like, oh, I remember you. You don't exist anymore, but I remember you. There you are. Again, I made another maggot head keychain because one is never enough. You need it for both bags. There's his little decapitated head. <laughs> um, oh no, I chipped some off. Is that a chip? The paint chipped off in two spots. What happened to you, buddy? I think I use this backpack less than my other one, so I don't know why paint's missing from two, but that's an easy touch up. I can color match that. Let's look inside. This one I don't think I made a matching wallet to because that's why the stuffing's still in it. 
but this is the inside lining and that's the best part of getting a backpack that has a blank lining is if I paint the inside of my front pocket black, you would never know this was once upon a time a Hocus Pocus bag. You would just think, hey, it's a Corpse Bride bag. This is a higher quality one. You can tell because we do have a zippered inside pocket, not just a flap or missing pocket. So that's pretty cool. This is a bag clip that I got and I believe Emily was the chase with the maggot popping out of her eye. So love that. The only thing I don't like about these bag clips is they are heavy. So a lot of the times I start out with these and then like, I think she's great, but she'll probably end up just hanging in my closet because these are heavy. I don't know why they make them so like solid. The last thing we will look at is the customized nameplate. They are a pain to make, but I feel like it's worth it in the end. I did the gold glitter because it kind of blends in with everything. Depending when the light hits it, sometimes it's hard to read lounge light on it. And then when the light hits it a different way, it's easier. I don't know if it's picking up on camera. I usually use paint pens to do everything. I might use your standard acrylic paint as the blank canvas on the back. And the glitter I think is actually nail polish. And then I sealed it with a clear coat. But the good and bad thing of the lounge fly plates is everything's raised. So you can see like the little four dots are raised, lounge flies raised. So the glitter also helps camouflage it popping through. I don't know if you could even tell on this one. I don't know. I think it just said Disney over here. But it's good that it's raised because then I can just easily trace lounge fly and don't have to worry about not mimicking the font. And then the corpse bride I freehand and I outlined it in gold because yeah, it just it couldn't stand out just on its own with that black, kind of like lounge fly. Lounge fly I didn't care, but corpse bride I wanted to stand out. Future me editing in this because I forgot to talk about it. I wanted to point out the busting seams of this bag. Wonky stitching can be fixed when you see your bag kind of lopsided like that. Not all the time, most of the time it can be with a hot blow dryer and you just like hold it out. That's a whole other separate video. But when your seams are busting, and by that I mean, I'll try and insert a photo if I can find one, but basically you can see the threading through it and the seams are just push, pushed outward like that. There's really nothing you can do about it because then it makes tucking the fabric hard because essentially there's just no seam. I was working with paint, sorry about that. But there's no seam because it's so much pressure that pushed against it during the factory. It's kind of hard to explain, but this is like best case scenario of what I could work with when it comes to busting seams. And it was only along this part here. Oh look, I just realized, did I get paint on you? And another edit, because I didn't realize that I had paint on this bag. I don't know what that would've came with, but I just want to show you acetone. It works so well. Look at that green paint. Oh, that must be the, from the maggot from storing this in my closet. That's why I was missing paint off the maggot, but that's how easy it was. Just got a little acetone on this. This was a good backpack, meaning that it was protected by lounge flies, so therefore the acetone didn't take off any of the paint. If you ever customize a backpack, I always suggest doing an acetone test beforehand because unless you're really good at color matching, which I do and it's a pain. I'm just gonna let you know it's a pain. Some of the backpacks are not protected. Like whatever this clear coating is that you see on this piping, some of the backpacks don't have that and the color will just come off and then you're stuck color matching. But this one had it, so I was able to use acetone on it. Most of their bags are protected, but yes, distraction. Yeah, so getting back to my point, busting seams, this is what it looks like. It is workable though, clearly. Also, I think in the other video, I didn't show you guys the top part of this. Okay, bye. You see, so this was solid, so I didn't cover up. I mean, you can, but for me, there's no point. If there's less work that I can do, then I'm taking the easy route. And same with this bottom. The bottom of the bag is a solid color. I do not want to cover this. So yeah, that's that one. Let me get my other one back. These are my two Corpse Fried bags. If I had to choose my favorite, it's always this one. And some people have asked me, do they last? 100%, they do. This one's gone on road trips with me and it's still held up. Now I did make a Tiana backpack for my sister. That one needs a touch up because like she wears it to work. She, she wears that 24 seven. So hers is gonna age a lot faster than mine where I wore this for five days straight and I did have heavy stuff in it but I'm sure my sister has heavy stuff in her backpack. The Tiana one, I believe it was the exact same bag as this too. Like this teal, I think it was the Princess Chibi. I have to touch hers up. And by that, I mean like the fabric over here might start peeling out, but it's just, it depends how rough you are with these bags. 
I'm not rough at all, so they still look absolutely brand new as if I've never used them once. I love you, my sister, but you know, when she has her backpack and she's done with it, poop, she throws it on the floor. That's, <laughs> that's where her bag goes. Everybody treats their bags differently and that's okay. You know, I made it as a gift and she's definitely used it to its full extent. And I'll definitely fix it up for her next time I see her to give the backpack more longevity. At the end of the day, they're just things, right? And what's the point of having things and stuff if you don't actually get to enjoy it? All right, guys, let me know what you think. Have you guys made anything custom yet? Do you plan on it? Remember the tutorial on how to make these is linked down below. I try to link all the custom bag videos in every single one of my videos descriptions. Let me know what bag you want to see next or just name a fandom. If I have it, I'll bring it out and show it to you guys, but I'll pick at random. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me today. If you want, feel free to like and subscribe and until next time, bye friends.